Hey, Chris. Good morning. How are you doing this morning? Great, Ron. How about yourself? Doing great. So today's part two. Hope you came back and join us. If you missed part one, today we're talking about the benefits of a doctor-patient portal. Today we're going to talk about the benefits to the providers, and then we're also going to tie it off with uh, the integration to the EMRs. Uh, part one, if you need to go back and see it, it'll be uh, linked at the end of this video, is for the benefits for the patients on the patient portal. So let's go ahead and just dive right in. Um, we really dove into all the benefits and what's in a patient portal. You call, a lot of times they call it a patient portal. I call it a doctor patient portal because it benefits both sides so much, right? And I always think about it that way. And then every time I talk to somebody, they're like, oh, patient portal, patient portal. And they never talk about the provider side. So today I think is going to be a really fun one. I want you to dive in and explain to me why you either agree with me and call it a doctor patient portal or why you think it's really the patient portal. Yeah, I totally agree. And I, I think, you know, just kind of expanding the scope like you just did there uh, where you called it a provider patient portal is really applicable because it's basically any care provider. And we have a lot of different care providers that will provide, you know, some form or part of the process. Um, and in most cases, there's a doctor involved, right? But it could be pharmacy, lab, um, you know, some other CSR type of role that is privileged to be, uh, you know, looped into some of that PHI and help with customer support, et cetera. And making that streamlined is really the heartbeat of what a patient is looking for. They really absolutely expect that things are going to be as automated wherever possible as they can be. And that's what we're used to. We're trained on that subconsciously. And as your business and your operation scales, it's essentially a requirement uh, to be able to scale efficiently and ultimately to deliver great customer sat to have automation in place and intelligent workflows that really are intuitive for both parties, whether it's a provider or a patient. So I think they definitely go hand in hand. And I think it's a great starting place to dig into the provider side of it with doctors, pharmacists, labs, customer service, et cetera. So um, yeah. it, it definitely seems like a game changer whenever we work with clients that don't have it and then they add that to their process, it really can unleash their business um, and, and really improve their customer sat, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's also, um, what am I trying to say here? There was some regulation past the Ease of Information Act or something, right, a few years ago where the government said, listen, doctors, you need to make it easy for patients if they ask for their information to get it. So they can either take it to a different doctor or they can take it to a, a specialist or whatever they need to, right? So basically the interoperability yeah. rule. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. So for me, that's the big important part, right? So let's start right at the top. I think the first thing we talk about is the ability to share that information, right? So first off is forms. Uh, we covered that pretty heavily in the patient side. You're going to have intake form, privacy forms, HIPAA forms, security forms, consent forms, referral forms, there's going to be all kinds of forms and things that are either going to need to be filled out or information that you need to make readily available to the patient. So from a provider benefit, the portal provides you a home to put all that information that they can do it. So, or sorry, the patients can access it. So they don't have to pick up the phone and call you and you don't have to worry about emailing them this information, especially if any of that information contains PHI and you'd violate HIPAA guidelines by emailing them uh, open documents. So first thing is there. The second one, um, and let's ping pong these back and forth. I'll let you cover the second one. The second one is really the appointments, right? Uh, and a lot of that is from the integration, it allows the provider to expose their internal calendar to the patient so the patients can actually schedule and cancel and notify and all that. So why don't you talk a little bit about the uh, integration and how it works with appointment scheduling and how that can really play? Absolutely. So I think one of the big things with the appointments is, and we, we hit on this a little bit in the last uh, session, but it, it sort of, it has to be seamlessly integrated to everyone's calendar wherever possible. So there needs to be the ability for someone to manually set a calendar, uh, especially as a provider. Um, they may have multiple systems like this they're working with. So it has to collaboratively interact 
without clashing. Uh, that can be a nightmare scenario for a provider to have clashing appointments. Um, so it's really important that we're respectful and we're able to be respectful of their calendar through the integration in an automated way. And then the other big thing I would say is workflows and notification with the, you know, profile specific, uh, you know, modality. So like if Ron, you're a provider and I'm a provider, you may prefer text messages because you're really high tech and that's your preference. I may prefer, you know, email links where I get a link that I have to click on. And that's just my thing. I like email and that's fine, but we both need to be able to set that the applications shouldn't be so rigid that we're stuck using something that the application decided. Um, right. The only other thing I would say just in general is that ideally there's a lot of consideration around what tends to happen in reality with appointments. So this kind of goes to workflows, but it ultimately is what happens if somebody gets sick, if there's a cancellation, what happened? Like most people are going to forget, don't like get upset that they're going to forget, just proactively message at the appropriate times. And we, we can even have the application kind of learn when this individual needs the reminders the most. Um, and, and that can be really helpful as well. So a lot of times we'll even make it so that they can choose how often they get the reminder and what the modality is. And this can be very helpful. Right. So those are some considerations with appointments. Um, you know, I would say letting them know like what the prerequisites are, if there are forms or intake processes, how long to prepare for that. Um, even like if they have to physically go somewhere, what's the drive time? If it's technology related, what's the tech stack that they're going to need to use and that they need to actually test it before the meeting, things like that. They really make a difference in the logistics. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'm going to hit money, right? So now the next one is uh, paying your bill, right? Yep. So it's easy to pay a copay when you show up and go in there, but you know, as soon as they in put it to insurance, insurance is either going to kick it back and force you to pay uh, towards your deductible, or there's going to be some portion nowadays that you're going to have to pay additionally. And so now there's these bills and mm -hmm. I don't even go to my mailbox once a, once a week. It's about every other week now because I just do everything digitally, right? So mm -hmm. instead of having to mail out these things and not getting paid forever because people like me just don't check your mailbox anymore, um, posting their bills online, automatic notifications that they received a bill to pay their bill from a simple link. That's another thing that I think for the portal is a real big one. Uh, for me to be able to go in and see a bill and go, what am I being billed for this time? To be able to go in, click on it and see clearly, here's what the insurance paid. Uh, here's what my copay is. Uh, even notes, uh, you know, I've had to call the doctor numerous times where like, did you even submit this to insurance? Because it doesn't look like it got it submitted. Yes. I, and then I have to call, wait on hold 20 minutes to talk to somebody and have them tell it was submitted to insurance. But insurance is going to apply this since it's the first of the year towards your deductible. So you're going to have to pay this one. Things like that, that, you know, would force phone calls or snail mail uh, can be taken care of in the portal pretty readily and pretty easily. Um, being able to integrate the portal to check insurance, right? I know we've done a number of uh, e-commerce sites where when they go in to check out, we go in and integrate with the EMR, EHR. We check insurance coverage. We check what their copay is. We can connect to Medicare, Medicaid, see if they have coverage so that we can more accurately know how much of the bill they'll be responsible for. Uh, along with the money, the ability for Ron, the patient, to be able to take a photo. Uh, I got a brand new insurance card. Um, they're asking for my insurance information so I can just take a quick snapshot with my phone and upload it to the portal. And so my doctor can have to check insurance coverage on an upcoming procedure. They could easily have my insurance information and I could keep my card and my contact information up to date in the portal. Very simply with my phone, right? Takes a few seconds. Um, Anything you want to do that I'm going to flip it back over. The next part's going to be you and posting, uh, you know, results and communications, things like that. But anything you wanted to add on that one around the billing or uh, any of that? Yeah, I'll, I'll just kind of take a couple of points on the payment and then go to the results. And I would say, I, I think what you said is perfect. There, there are a lot of um, libraries that we could bring in that will help us to 
contact and, and interact with insurance, Medicare and Medicaid to be able to identify coverage and to, you know, make a request uh, to, you know, to submit. A lot of our clients that, you know, they, they are uh, working with existing software, uh, we, we will integrate with that existing software as well. So this is just a general question. If you just kind of generalize that with your upcoming project, is your, is your vendor that you're going to be working with, are they going to be able to do that kind of integration? And it's just a great question to ask because ultimately the business has to be, you know, operating profitably <laughs> to survive and, and grow. Um, the other thing that I would say that we can do is set up a payment plan and this can be set up as a subscription. So a lot of times things will be very expensive and it might be prohibitive uh, to get a certain kind of treatment unless there's a legal agreement that can be e-signature, uh, you know, authorized and then a payment plan. So we can do that. And that's a really help, helpful thing, um, you know, for a, a medical practice uh, that, that's got a relatively expensive overhead. Um, as far as results, yeah, this, this, is, this is something that ultimately, depending on your business, um, the, we may be looking at lab results. We may be looking at, you know, a particular uh, output from an appointment that's with a specialist, whether it's a pharmacy, doctor, you know, some form of specialist, it, it may be both of those, it may be genetic test or some kind of analysis that we've done. Ultimately, uh, the point would be that we can integrate with um, lab software, and other, you know, like you said, EMR, EHR, as well as direct lab software. So we've done a lot of work with labs, where we directly integrate with their APIs. And this is really powerful, uh, especially if you're operating at some form of scale and you're working to scale out your business, you know, you're just not going, it's not going to make sense to hire people to manually put data in. And so again, this is going to be a really key part of the funnel, which is automating this interaction. And I think a lot of people Ron, they really see like forms and appointments is kind of obvious, but a lot of times they don't necessarily think about all the nuances of the results and what can be automated and what can be presented in a way that's really friendly for the users. Right. So I'd love for you to talk more right. about that as well. Yeah. Sounds great. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll bring up the screenshot right here. And this one shows a client that we did uh, recently. They uh, during COVID got approved for a new, they got a patent and a new approved device. It first got approved for use in the UK. So this one, when we first launched, it was actually in the UK. And what you're seeing here is these are the test results that came back. So not only when you go into the dashboard, and I'll show the dashboard right here, the dashboard shows, and here's a whole bunch of test information. Obviously, I can't show doctors. So this is test information that our developers did. So you can see all the tests color-coded, whether they were uh, high, low, medium, whatever it was. But when you go in to view the test results, then we actually put a really nice legend together, and it says here, hey, you got a 1256. If you're vaccinated, a 1256 means this. Over here, you can see if you're not vaccinated, a 1256 means this. So it really explains, because this is the part that's hard that Chris is talking about, right? It's one thing to post results. And usually the reason doctors deliver the results is because they have to answer all the questions of the patient when the results comes in and the patient's like, well, what about this? What about this? What does this mean? And so what we've tried to do, as you can see here, when these results come back, we'd be like, hey, if you've been vaccinated, it means this. If you haven't, it means this. By the way, and as I scroll down the screen here, here's a screenshot where I've expanded out the borderline, medium, low, the other ones too, and it explains it. Hey, if your result was this, this is what it means. And then as I scroll all the way down to the bottom of the screen here, you can see now what we've tried to do is graphically represent, hey, your 1256, in reference to the scale, here's how high it is in the good range. Here's what your previous three tests were. And oh, by the way, coming up, and you can see in this screenshot, in the last one, there's a notification in three months, you should probably order another test. And then an automatic reminder is sent out and then they can order the other test. So the interpretation of the results and the ability to communicate better with the patient is really where a lot of that value is. Um, and we can help build that out, right? It doesn't just come with the results. The results comes from the lab. The interpretation comes from the doctor. And so depending how much of that you want to handle 
yourself through a telehealth visit, a chat, phone call, or force them to come into the office, or whether you want to automate that into the portal and be able to handle more patients. Um, that's something we've seen a lot. We know that the insurance companies now are putting time limits where like my doctor right now, if my appointment's going to be more than 15 minutes, I have to make a second appointment. So uh, the insurance companies are really cracking down on the doctors to get patients cranked through the office faster. And so they don't have a lot of time to communicate with them. And so the portals are becoming much more important. Um, another one, uh, as you were mentioning, the Medicare, Medicaid, uh, and the different third party integrations that hit me was the ability to hit the FDA. So one of the others, and we can uh, finish with this one, it's really about prescriptions, right? Refill prescriptions and, and getting, sometimes I just need my doctor to do a script, but I'm gonna manually take it to another, a new pharmacy. So I just want the physical script so they could actually go in, do a script, do a digital signature, and then I can print it out from the portal and take it with me to whichever pharmacy I wanna to go to. However, uh, when I go and the doctor writes a prescription, one of the things that we can integrate with is all of their medications to see with an FDA, are there any conflicts uh, with different medications? You know, Ron's already on naproxen for his back surgery and now the doc's gonna give him some Oxycontin for some knee pain, didn't realize that he was also on naproxen and we can't double up on narcotics, things like that, right? right. Uh, just trying to give a, a serious example there. So what I'll do is I'll turn it over to you and let you kind of tie off on any other thing you want to throw in there. But if you want to talk about any of the prescriptions or any of that EMR integration, and then uh, we'll finish yeah. up for today. Absolutely. So I will say that one of the things that's unique to Clarity is we do integrate with the major EMR, EHR platforms, um, as well as the major pharmacy platforms. And this even includes um, you know, compounding uh, pharmacies and being able to work with them. Um, so we work with, you know, uh, SureScript. Um, we also work with uh, LifeFile, Pharmedica, uh, DAW, the, the, like the list goes on. So if you're in one of these particular areas and you need to be able to send uh, prescriptions uh, digitally, we know how to do this and go through all the certification with these different providers um, and work with them. The other thing I would just briefly mention is communication. Uh, one of the big things that we do a lot with HIPAA is we send links and let someone know via email, text, or you know another form uh, that they've received a notification or a message. Uh, this can be in-app. And this is really important for providers too. And then we allow them to do the detailed messaging with the context, the associated context to that message, whether it's a lab result, or an appointment or a patient in the case of a provider um, and all the associated actions with a message. So they can message with the user, um, interact with them. And that's a really key thing for HIPAA compliance that is also very vital, uh, but not necessarily included in every software package. So we encourage you to look at that, the messaging and the intelligence. The only other thing I would wrap up with is AI and being able to use intelligent solutions, um, analytics, and, and really be able to sort of augment some of the workload. Uh, we see this more and more. And being able to have analytics and AI uh, be essentially monolithic and isolated to your particular practice or to a particular practice, if you have a platform, um, you know, does your software have the ability to isolate that data and make sure that it's HIPAA compliant while taking advantage of the latest technology? Um, so anyway, definitely a lot to consider. That's why I recommend working with a partner who's done this before, um, who can really help you think about these areas and then develop your strategy. Uh, we certainly appreciate you taking the time to listen to and watch this video. And if you have any questions, you want to interact with us directly, you can ask us for a complimentary no sales discovery process. And we're also happy to, um, you know, otherwise just continue to crank out awesome videos. Comments are welcome below so we can focus on areas that you would find valuable. And thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye for now. Bye for now.